Hi, this is Dr. Stephen with Outclick Magazine. Today, we are excited to bring to you Brendan Scholl, whose life and coming out story is chronicled in the documentary, Draw With Me. Brendan, welcome to today's program. Hello. Hey, welcome. We were chatting before um, about all the things you've gotten to do. Um, but first, just tell us about yourself. Tell us your story and uh, your journey, uh, if you'd like, so people can get to know a little bit about you. Uh, sure. Um Obviously, my name's Brendan. Um, I I just turned twenty. My birthday was like a couple days, like no, a week ago. I have no concept of time. Things just happen, and I'm kind of there. Welcome to COVID world. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, I use they them or he him pronouns. I prefer they them. Um, I'm current. I just moved back to my uh, college dorm, so that's what's happening right now. Um, I've been out since I was 14, I think. I think it was around 14 when I came out to my family. Um, I didn't really have the traditional like coming out that a lot of people have because my mom found my binder, which I, I used to like make my chest look flat. So it was kind of a very sudden, unexpected thing where she kind of confronted me about it rather than it being like me sitting them down and like telling them. So I it was re really unprepared, very, very messy, but I feel like most coming outs are tend to be messy. Um, I just, we just kind of let whatever happened happen. Hmm. And now I'm here. And now you're here. Hey, um, it's chronicled and you got to be part of this uh, documentary called uh, Draw With Me. Hmm. Uh, tell people about the concept of the documentary and kind of what it was like to be in that. Uh, so Draw With Me, it's a short documentary about like my coming out story and how I used art to help, help me work through like different struggles that I was having, be it like with my mental health or with my own um, gender. And it just, it kind of follows not just me, but also like my family and my coming out. It, we did it in uh, collaboration with the Trevor Project, which is the uh, leading um, suicide prevention line for LGBTQ youth, which I've used before and which is kind of how I discovered them. Because the director Constantine, he he's he's been volunteering with the Trevor Project for like like years and years. So when we when we first like met, it was at my at my house because he did a film with my mom, and he, she invited them over to have dinner because we have like a a common family friend who I've known since I was like born. So we just kind of ended up sitting on the floor in my room and I was like pulling out like different art pieces being like, this is what I made when I was really sad. And this is how I was feeling. And it just kind of led to him being like, Oh, you know, we could, we could make a film about this. Like there's a story here. And I was like, Oh, Oh, sure. Yeah. Cause in my mind, like, Oh, this is just my life. It's, it's not so much a story as it is just like what I've lived. Now, is there a particular piece or pieces of art uh, that come to mind that are, you know, that stick out, that tell a story or that you could describe to us? And why Why is that art? Because uh, I'm not an artist. If, if it would be me, it would be nothing but stick figures. Um, why, why does that piece of art tell part of your story? Um, the, there, there are actually three pieces that were kind of like part of a set where you can see they um, show up in the film where it's essentially me personifying my like depression and my anxiety as these like creatures where I feel like I'm like lost in the woods and I'm trying to run away from from like these like dark thoughts and these these this like meant this mental illness and how in thinking that I'm getting away and that I'm like finding some way to like cope with it, I end up falling into these like really self-destructive behaviors and I just get worse. And I kind of, I kind of cr like created this idea where I'm running away from them and then I see this like pit 
of just like darkness. I'm like, well, this has to be better than what I'm running from. So I, I kind of like jump into the pit and the pit is, is these self-destructive behaviors. And that I just get worse from where I was before. And the, the reason that these art pieces mean so much to me is because I have a really hard time like verbalizing how I'm feeling in the moment where after things happen, I have no problem like saying, yeah, this is how I was feeling. This is what I was doing and blah, blah, blah. But when I'm like in the moment going through something, I'm, I have a hard time finding the right words and like finding the right way to phrase things. So art kind of gives me, it gives me an ability to not worry about phrasing and just show, like show people how I'm feeling. Like, this is how I'm feeling. This is the best way I can think to get you to understand how I'm feeling. So it, it, it gave me this, this outlet to like visualize how I'm feeling without having to worry about picking like the wrong words or picking the word with the wrong connotation. And that's not what I'm trying to say. It just kind of gave me like a very clear way of saying, this is how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. It gives a voice to the emotions that are overwhelming. I've talked yep. to people, um, people who have a depression and they say it's like a giant wall or a brick wall laying on top of you that you can't uh, move or uh, get off of you. Yeah. Um, and how heavy, heavy that wall is to get off. And it sounds like the art for you helps to lift that wall off and maybe kind of give you that power uh, to move it off. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, for sure. I, I, I have a really bad habit where I, I tend to like bottle up my negative yeah. feelings because I think like with depression, it kind of tells you like no one's going to care. No mm -hmm. one wants to know how you're feeling. They're better off without you. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of get stuck in this cycle of yeah, they don't want to hear it. They don't, they're tired of hearing about it. I'm not going to open up about it. And you just like bottle it up and it just like gets more under more and more pressure. And it just feeds into being like, nobody wants to hear it. They've heard it enough. Yes. And the art gave me ability of being like, I can just kind of like, like ease up the pressure a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I can, I can let some of that out. Mm -hmm. And even if I don't show anybody, it's not inside of me anymore. It's, it's, it's out in the world. So I don't, it's less pressure inside of me. Mm -hmm. Now, if you could say one or two or three, I'll let you leave open to someone who is dealing with depression. Uh, what, what would you say to them? I know that it's super cliche and it's everywhere. And any time, every time like you ask someone, someone always says it, but it, it does get better. And there, there's going to be a moment down the line, be it next week, next month, next year, where you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be, wow, I'm so happy that I'm alive. I'm so happy that I'm here to see this. Maybe you saw a really cute dog or maybe you're just like hanging out with your friends and you're laughing so hard that like your sides hurt. And you're just like, I'm so happy that I'm here right now. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't, you would have never experienced that happiness. And things may suck a lot right now, but it's not always going to suck. It's not always going to feel like that. Mm -hmm. And you got to, you got to be around to see when it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, I've often uh, said or heard um, that uh, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. Um, and then it's hard sometimes to see that it is a temporary problem, but it is. And as you said, you know, at some point it will get better. Things will change. And it's hard when you have that brick wall laying on top of you to feel yeah. like it will get better. It will get better. I think this year when we've been cooped up, it's mm -hmm. exacerbated uh, the yeah. situation for so many. Um, I've wondering what will become, you know, things don't get better and people are so cooped up, you know, after after this year. Uh, you found a wonderful resource uh, in the Trevor Project. Yeah. Uh, we're going to put up maybe a still. You got to speak. You're so eloquent when you spoke. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the Trevor Project. Uh, they have a text, a chat, mm -hmm. and a call option uh, yeah. to reach out. Yeah, um, the Trevor Project was something that my therapist recommended to me mm -hmm. because it, like you said, it, there's a chat, there's a call, and there's text. So however you feel the most comfortable is how you can reach out to them because it's a suicide prevention hotline. And with 
a lot of hotlines you as as a queer person you don't know how the other person feel like what their views are towards the community and you don't know whether or not they're accepting and you don't know how they're going to like respond to that part of yourself so the trevor project it kind of takes that that fear out of the equation where you don't have to worry like you know the the people that you're talking to are going to support you they're going to support your identity and they're they're not going to think there's anything wrong with you for being who you are so you can kind of rather than trying to explain like your identity you can talk about how you're actually feeling and sometimes the Trevor project like all you need is you just need somebody to talk to it doesn't even have to be about like your mental illness it doesn't even have to be about it. like sometimes you just need to talk and you just need somebody else to be there for you and that's that's what i found in the Trevor project when i was using it Mm -hmm. Who is that? Uh, we showed the picture. Who's that standing behind you? Uh, oh, that's there? my mom. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. And she's part of the story that's in uh, Draw With Me. So she, yeah. she was there behind you. That's phenomenal that she was there. Yeah. yeah the, there were there were two galas. There was one in New York, which is the one that my mom went, uh, went with me to. Mm -hmm. And there was one in LA that my dad went with me to. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got, I got both of them like looped into it. Mm -hmm. Now, the other big question always uh, uh, and on uh, Instagram, J-Lo does an intro uh, yeah. uh, to talk about it. So tell us about your connection with J-Lo. And we had to listen to it several times, nibble it, and tell us what, tell us what, nibbling, sorry, nibbling, tell us what that is and tell us your connection with J-Lo. Um, so J-Lo's my aunt. Okay. Which you generally can't really tell from looking at me. Um, and it's kind of like my whole life, it was never really like, oh my gosh, my aunt's a celebrity. It was like, yeah, that's my aunt. She does stuff. And I'm, and I go with her sometimes to like see her concerts and things. Uh -huh. And nibbling is, it's with, with the increasing awareness of non-binary identities, you kind of start to realize just how few gender neutral, just how little gender neutral language there is in the world. So nibbling is one of those gender neutral terms that, that we're like trying to like, like discover. And it's basically a gender neutral version of niece or nephew. Mm -hmm. And I, per, I personally, I like, I really like nibbling. It, it's 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 it seems it's fun and it's cute and I really like it, but obviously not everyone's gonna feel that way when you're. Cause we're we're trying to figure out new things and nothing's gonna come out immediately and be like the perfect solution for everybody, so I I personally really like it, but I know some people aren't a huge fan of it. But that's just what I like and what I prefer. And to have her, use it was it was like so like reaffirming mm -hmm. where it's like somebody with a huge platform and one of my relatives who has this like ginormous reach is spreading this word that other people may, like probably didn't even know about and weren't even aware like existed and kind of exposes people who might not have had any exposure to the trans community and to non-binary people, giving them this exposure so that they, they can learn, which is, I think the first step to getting past ignorance and getting past prejudice is to learn and to just go out and talk to people and, ex and hear people's experiences. Mm -hmm. The first step is just learning about people individually learning their story and learning their individual journeys exactly. and how, how they have changed and how, you know, everyone has their own story. We're not, mm. we're not forced into so many of this, but learning and sitting, just talking to people and saying, Hey, hey what's your life about? And uh, getting to know the people. And I've always said that will be our biggest social change agent mm. is getting to know the real people and their real stories. Yeah. So it's such, it's so great. Congratulations on, you know, the film draw with me. Um, what's ne what's next for you? 
Do you have any, what's, I mean, other than college and, you know, getting to just be, be, uh, be your age, what's next for you? Um, there's, I know there's some, there's some Oscar hum with the film, okay. which is insane. Cause in my mind, I'm just like, I'm just a little kid from the suburbs who just happened to know the right people. And now there's talk of it possibly being nominated for an Oscar, which is so surreal and doesn't, it does not feel real at all. So we're, we're kind of like seeing, like hope, hoping, crossing fingers that, that will we'll win or even just get a nomination. And just kind of seeing, seeing where, where life takes the film and where life takes takes me with the film and just kind of like spreading the message. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a voice, you have a platform I do. Um, already. I, you know, I'm a firm believer in seeing what the universe or, or God or whomever out there opens, you know, whatever doors and being open to using the voice uh, that you have already been given. I can't imagine the power at a young age of being able to, to speak. And you know, of course, you know, she's saying, JLo was saying the other week and did an amazing job. So that's, that's awesome. Um, but this is very exciting. Thank you for joining us and telling us about the film and telling us a little bit more about uh, your story and your journey, Brendan. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to put up uh, the links in the website. Oh, Arthur's got it. Here we go. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the uh, Vinmo v Vimeo. I'll get it correct. If I can pronounce it correctly, Vimeo uh, on demand uh, for the um, trailer. Um, I love this photo. Thank you. Uh, we no, did it what? in my living room. I can't hear you. The full video. Oh, the full video. The full video. Okay. Um, Arthur's talking to me in the background. He thinks I can read lips with his mask on. It's like <laughs> through this every time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's on there. Oh, I see you can rent it on there too. I'm Vimeo. So, okay. Very good. Oh. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, yes, thank you. Um, we've got your uh, social media on there um, and your website if you'd like to get in touch and follow your social media uh, online. And then uh, let's see, what else have we got? What are the links? And then there's ours. Huh. Uh, you can text uh, we, our shameless plug. Oh, <laughs> thank you. The 22828 to stay updated on us. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule mm -hmm. to chat with us. We look forward to sure. future projects to come, maybe more films or, or whatever is yet to come. So any final words before we cut out? Um find what makes you happy and just hold on to it as, with as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. Great last words. Hold on to what you can, especially during these challenging times. Mm. All right, everyone, have a great afternoon and we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.